Hey, scholars, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to show you how to calculate the drag polar for an airplane. It's not too hard and it's very informative. So if we're going to do this, first thing we need is an airplane, right? Have one right here. This is a little radio controlled airplane called an Aeroscout. This is mine. Well, this is actually parts of two planes that I crashed. This one's holding up fine, though. Um, and it's a little trainer. I'm not an especially good radio control pilot yet, so I'm still flying a trainer. And it's representative of a whole range of aircraft. It looks a lot like, the, like a full-size manned aircraft, and it flies about the same. So this plane, like all planes, has drag that comes from basically two sources. The first is called parasite or form drag, and that's from the air just trying to get past the, the shape of the airplane here. It, there's turbulence, there's uh, shear stress across the surfaces of the plane, and that, that drag is constant. It's there no matter what else is going on. The other uh, component of drag is what's called induced drag, and that's because the plane is making lift. So the plane doesn't fly exactly straight into the wind. It flies with a little bit of what's called an angle of attack. The plane has an angle with respect to the incoming air, and that's how the wing makes lift. So the wing doesn't make just lift when it's at an angle. It makes a force up, but it also makes a force back. And that backward component of the force is induced drag. The more lift you're making, the more induced drag you're making. So those two components are added together to get the total drag of the aircraft. So let's see how this works. All right, so we have two components. Let's just write them down. So the total drag coefficient of the airplane is the form drag, which is called CD0. When you, do, when you have zero lift, what you got left is form drag. So that's why they call it CD0 plus CLI for CL induced. Now these are coefficients. They're just numbers. They don't have units. In uh, engineering talk, those are called dimensionless. And so let's expand this out a little bit. Well, CD0 is just a number. And you either measure it or calculate it. Practically speaking, you kind of got to measure it. The, 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 all the uh, contributors to CD0 this can sometimes get pretty complicated. So in practice, you measure it a lot of the time. So this induced drag is a very simple expression. Looks like this. Now, it's a function of coefficient of lift squared. So that makes this a parabola. Well, CL is the lift coefficient. That's a measure of how much lift you're making. Pi is just a number. E is called the Oswald efficiency factor. And this is basically a measure of, of how efficient the wing plan form is. And this is aspect ratio. So let's, let's unpack those two. So E, like I said, Oswald efficiency factor. Now, there's an ideal lift distribution. That is, the ideal amount of lift that's produced as you look down the span of the wing. And when it's an ideal, E is 1. That's theoretically the most efficient you can get, or at least the most efficient you can get with a, a fairly simple uh, analysis of lift. Um, classically, E is 1 for an elliptical wing. Now, elliptical wings are hard to make. There's no flat surfaces on them anywhere. And all the ribs, they're not only different sizes, they're not even proportionally different. They, go, they, they have to make this sort of curve. So elliptical wings are hard to make. But if you're willing to put up with it, E is 1, or pretty close. So a few airplanes in history have elliptical wings. If you're a fan of old airplanes, the Supermarine Spitfire, the British fighter from World War II, had these beautiful elliptical wings. Spitfire was famously hard to build. Um, the other one that you may know less about is there was a plane called a P-47. If the uh, Spitfire was like a little light sports car, P-47 was this big thundering, like, I don't know what, muscle car, I guess. And so even though it was this big sort of jug-looking airplane, in fact, the pilots called it the jug, it had this beautiful elliptical wing. Well, why would you do that? Well, this is why you do that. Now, my little plane over there doesn't have an elliptical wing. For reasons that don't really matter here, wings that are almost rectangular uh, make the plane behave a little more benignly. They make a, they're, they're good for trainers. So the, my plane there has almost no taper on it. So the Oswald efficiency factor of my plane is probably about 0 0.9, 0 0.85, something like that. 
The other thing you need to know is aspect ratio, AR. And an aspect ratio is just what it sounds like. It's a measure of how long and skinny wings are. So the bigger the aspect ratio, the smaller this term is, because the aspect ratio is in the denominator. So planes that have to be really, really efficient tend to have high aspect ratios. And if you want to, go look up a picture of a sailplane. These are very, very efficient planes that stay in the air by circling in rising air columns, or sometimes air is going up over a ridge. And the idea is they, they need very, very little power to stay in the air. So they're long and skinny. They have very small cross sections. They're very smooth. So this is a very small number. And this number here is extremely high. They're very long, skinny wings. They fly great at low speed. Um, so those are, those are this, exp this expression in the extreme. Um, when you plot this out, it's going to look like this. Now, when you think parabola, you think of something that looks like that. For, I don't know, historical reasons, I guess, um, drag is usually plotted on the horizontal axis, and lift is on the vertical axis, just like that. And so your drag polar looks like that. Let me get my head out of your way here. That's pretty typical for a drag polar. So this distance right here, right there, that's CD0. You can't get any lower than that because if this were zero, it's not, but let's just say it was, you're still stuck with that. There's just nothing you can do to get away from that. And so this, this part of the curve is due to form drag, and this part of the curve is drag due to lift. There's one other slick little feature of this curve, I probably shouldn't have drawn that there. If you look at, if you draw a line from that point to tangent, the point where it crosses there and there, that's the maximum CL over CD, which in the, the, the higher that number is, the more efficient the plane is. So something that's not very efficient, think uh, I don't know, an ultralight aircraft that has all the wires and tubes and stuff sticking out of the air. The drag, you know, CL over CD, which is the lift over drag of that, is four, five, six, somewhere in that neighborhood. For one of those really efficient open class sailplanes, let's get this out of the way, um, that might be 30 or 40 to one. It can be very, very high. So this is all caught up in the drag polar. Now, let's do one more thing here. Let's run a couple of numbers, run a number, and then I'll, I'll uh, we'll calculate this, and then I'll show you on my screen in my computer. I'll do a screenshot for you uh, with a drag polar and a sample calculation for you. So let's say CD0 equals 0 0.05. That's fairly streamlined. That's actually not too bad. We need an area. Okay. Actually, we don't need an area. We need a uh, aspect ratio. Well, let's say it's 12 meters squared, so that's like 110, 120 square feet. This is a little airplane. This is, this is a little piston-powered plane. We'll assume it's got an aspect ratio of 6. All right. Um, and what else do we need to know? We need to know uh, Oswald efficiency factor. Well, you can look it up, you can test it, but there is a nifty uh, curve fit for this. This is in Dan Raymer's book on aircraft design, so check that out. Okay, E is 1.78. Okay, now this, is, this is a curve fit based on uh, studying lots and lots of airplanes, and it's surprisingly accurate. It's, it's pretty handy to get a close form uh, result like that. So from this, I get E of 869, all right? And if I want to calculate the total CD, and we need a uh, lift coefficient. Well, if the plane's flying along at high speed, the lift coefficient might be pretty low. So let's say the lift coefficient is 0 0.1. Now that's awfully low, but it's plausible. So with that, there's hardly any, dra any uh, induced drag at all. Well, that's an awfully low number. Let's make something a little more reasonable here. 
and let's make that 0 0.4. With a lift coefficient of 0 0.4, the total drag is 0 0.06. So this isn't going up too, too fast. This is actually pretty good. So this is the basic idea. Here's how to calculate it. So I'll close with a screenshot. I did all the calculations in MathCAD Prime. So you can see all the calculations, sample result, and a drag polar. I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.